Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And welcome to our new centre. So you may have already seen our introduction to our new centre. We have just moved here and this is the first time we've filmed in this room. So hopefully the sound will be alright, the lights will be alright. We've only got one <laughs> shot at this so it needs to be okay. So if it's not, please forgive us. <laughs> Alright, so it's really nice to be back filming. Um, we have been busy trying to get the centre all organised, but it's all going well. And we are in the centre of Maidstone in the south east. So um, we have a couple of train stations, so we're quite near to London, so it'd be really nice to see some of you at some point. Yeah, so if you do ever come over to the UK, if you live overseas, um, and you're in or near London, have a look at our website. If you look in the description below, you will see a link to the Maidstone Yoga Centre. So have a look below, that's in the description down there, and we will have a link in there so you can look at their uh, timetable on that website. Yes, and for today's lesson, we're going to get moving very shortly, but Leo's yeah, just going to go through some of the props that you may need. So, I'm sitting on a couple of foam pads. You will need a couple of foam pads, uh, two bricks, two belts, a blanket. Now, we've got a rolled mat here. Most people won't have a second mat, so you can always roll your mat up. Okay, and this is going to become very important to start our sequence because we're going to use that rolled mat along the spine. And it's a very simple way to become a little bit more aware of the spine. So Leo's going to place it in the centre of the mat and then she's going to lie on this mat. Now, when you lie on this, it's really quite nice um, because it's a little bit more solid than a bolster. So when you lie back, you just have to get it in the right place. Now for some of you who've got really tight upper backs and shoulders, then you may need to have a bolster underneath the back of the head. But otherwise, it just extends slowly. Yeah, and just rest. And it's a really nice feeling. Now, what I want you to do is to just give yourself just a little bit of movement side to side. This isn't a rocking, it's just a very small shifting of the weight. Yes, you can see that Leo's just shifting and then she's going to shift the other way. Just get a little bit more aware of those very thick, tight attachments to the spine. So just a few times just rolling into this support and you'll find that almost needs that area you know just like you would need any um any dough it's very much like that you have to move just very slowly and carefully so that you could just unwind some of those fibers and then just become very weighted in the feet so that the belly softens, the front body softens, and everything releases down towards the spine side. And although this is not relaxation, this is just becoming a little bit more aware of the central spinal collar. And we're going to need this just uh, for our next action. So we're going to be coming for Barabhasana twist in a moment. So just take a few more um, breaths, just releasing onto the bolster. Now Leo looks very relaxed on this um, rolled mat, so um, we're going to have to get her up in a second. Mm -hmm. Alright, so roll to your right side and come up. So we're coming for Balvajasana. So this is when we take our legs from Dandasana. So we're going to sit in Dandasana. And you see Leo's got a couple of foam pads here to sit in your Dandasana, extending the legs and rolling the shoulders back and down, you can see here. 
So what we're going to do, we're just going to come into a very basic way of practicing physios on these two foam pads. Now, we have got a tutorial out, I think we put that out last week, so on Baravajasana. So there'll be all different options, including the classical way of working. But we're going to take the legs to the left now. So you can see here, the legs go to the side and the top foot goes over the instep of the lower foot. And then we re-establish that lift up. So you're going to lift up really nicely. Now I'm going to place a brick just behind me over here. So keep that lift, keep that extension, and just take that right hand behind you. So take the right hand behind and, and grab the brick um, behind you too, and lift up so much. Now just to get a little bit more extension, raise your left arm up and extend up. Now what we want to establish here is that rolled blanket right within the center of the spine and everything towards that left side has got to go to the left. It's all got to turn, it's all got to turn, it's all got to turn. And then without losing that, extend the arm to the outer side of the right thigh. And you can pull on that right thigh and lift up again and be aware that the extension goes all the way up and all the way up through the top of the crown of the head as well. So we've got to see that everything extends and lengthens. Just release in the shoulders, yeah, as you get that turn. And then release in and straighten the legs into Dandasana. Keep the legs in that seated position to stretch them out just for a moment or two. Roll the shoulders back and down. Keep the chest lifted and then take the legs to the right side. You're going to take the legs to the right side and then, again, see that the top foot is on the lower instep and then lift up. You're going to take your left hand behind you now, find that brick and reach up so much with your right arm, extend up. Now again, we've got to find that central line, that center of the spine to turn so much, turn so much towards that left leg, you've got to find that turning and then take in the hand to the outer side of the thigh. Use the thigh, use the hand and lift up, roll your shoulders back and down, keep in that action. Yeah, and breathe at the same time. It's a really nice way to unfold the spine. It's a very friendly twist. And those of you who find it challenging, if you've got knee difficulties, then of course you can use a chair, which we show in the tutorial. So uh, do have a look at our tutorial on Baravajasana. And then release in and straighten your legs. Okay, so for our next pose, we want to just work on getting those leg fibers really nice and long because after our seated position we're going to come into standing action. So we're coming for Orpa Vista Kanasana. Now you can see here that Leo is getting the roll and she's just going to sit on the end of the rolled blanket. So this really does lift the base of the spine and again you get that division, you can see that. Then you take the legs nice and wide. Now, for those of you who find it quite challenging to sit in this position, you've got to remember that, you can see Leo is making a few adjustments there, that you have to see that this leg, the whole of this outer leg, you can't really see very well here, but all of this action has got to come back even more. So this has really got to grip down and support. So what tends to happen in these creases is they get creased and they get really entwined. So all of this needs to be very, very sharp. And this is quite difficult because a lot of the time this is quite short. It's a short area, so we've got to make sure that we are getting that action. 
So what we're going to do for Leo is to grab a couple of belts because we're going to place them around the feet. So I'll do this one and Leo will do the other leg and hold. Now this is a very good way, and again we do have a tutorial on upper vista kalasana, but actually just keep that upright position will help these legs extend and push into the belts and lift up and roll your shoulders back and down. So you have to see that the whole of this area moves back. Yes, and then you've got to open the chest. So we do find that actually we, we shorten the spine a little bit by just hinging forward slightly to give that balance. And it's just a habit that your body gets into. Okay, and then release in. So we just wanted to come into the upper vista seated position just for a few moments to get those leg fibers really nice and strong. So we're going to bring the legs together and we're going to come into a very similar action but standing. So we're going to stand up and come into Prasavita Padrasanasana. We're going to have two bricks for this action. So placing the bricks in the front and taking the legs a little bit apart. Okay, so we're stepping the legs and having the heels onto the supports, yes, onto the edge of the mat. Okay, now we've got to remember that these legs have got to really push deeply towards the bone side. So here we've got to see that we go back. But this hip area has got to lift up, so it's a real big divide there and such strong action to roll the shoulders back and down and then taking your hands to your frontal hip flexors and hinge forward, hinge forward, come into that hinging action. Then taking your hands onto your bricks. Now keeping this really nice extension. So you've got to remember that the back of the pelvis needs to lengthen so much towards the back buttock. And sometimes we come into habits where we drop the pelvis because for a lot of people it is fairly movable. So we need to stabilize that so that we can lengthen through the whole of the front of the body. Now if you're keeping this action very nicely, then turn the bricks and come into a lower version, slightly lower. So again, keeping that length through, but be careful that you don't overdo here. This has got to lengthen back, and now you've got to lengthen the breastbone forward. That's it. So this has all got to stay back. And then see, can you tip your hands onto the floor? So it gradually unfolds in the body in Hazaluti Padottanasana. Now, those of you who are a little bit more um, pliable and you have a little bit more movement, then you can walk your hands a little bit nearer towards the body. But remember, the, the spine stays exactly like this. Yeah. Bend the elbows just a little bit, nudge them towards your leg side and just be there, be there. That's it. Keeping that action, still maintaining this length of the tailbone, still getting that extension through the center of the body, still seeing that the collarbones are lengthening forward, and then finally releasing the head. So here, we're going to flatten the hands and just see, it may be that you come to the brick and you just rest the head onto the brick, or you may be able to go a little bit further. But when you're getting this, this area is supporting you. It's not all dropping. This is lifting the back of the pelvis. And the legs have got to really engage. Okay, and then looking forward, and then pivot the feet a little bit in, and then coming up, and standing in Tadasana. So now we're standing in Tadasana feet together, we're going to prepare for Virabhadrasana too. Now we want to get this bent leg action before we come for Trikonasana today. So feet together, taking the hands to the chest and jump those legs apart. Good. Alright, so we know for this pose we're coming into a bent leg action. So keeping that lift through the centre of the body, 
turn your back foot in, left foot in, right leg out and lifting up through the centre of the body. Now keeping that back leg really grounded and firm, I'm going to just put my foot here so Leo has a little bit more resistance to work with and then bending that front leg, bending the front leg, yes, keeping that action. Now reach into those fingers and turn towards those fingers. Yes, yeah, so it's quite a strong action. But the legs have got to be like you're splitting that mat in two. You're pushing so much, so much into that back leg. And then coming up out of the pose and turning the feet to face forward. And then lifting up. Okay, so we come to the other side. We turn now. The right foot in, the left foot out, and then coming up. So it's really important that you get that rotation of the front, front leg. So I'm just going to show you this action. So the is going to bend the leg again, pause. Now what's really key here is that all of this area, like in Upa Vista Kanasana, it lifts. This all lifts. And then you go down. You can see that I'm holding up this thigh so it's not dropping with the earth. She's got a little bit of resistance there happening. So, turning the head towards those fingers. So remember, you've got to engage the whole of that thigh so the bottom of the thigh lifts up to the bone of that bent leg. And then you've got to see, can that butter go down a little bit more, a little bit more? So challenging, so, so challenging. And then taking a breath in and releasing, turn the feet toes forward. And then jumping those legs together and stand in Tadasana. So feet together. Soft inhalation and exhalation. So just remember the breath for a few moments. So standing in Tadasana, challenge your balance, take your weight back, see how that affects your legs. Do your legs have to lift when you take your weight back? Are you lifting through the centre of the body? Are you lifting your chest? So all of these different areas, you have to do a little bit of a checklist to actually just be there observing your breath eventually. Okay, so we come for Trikonasana now. So taking your fingers to your chest and jump those legs. So many of you will know this pose as the triangle pose and straight leg action. So turning your left foot in your right foot out. Now, you got to remember that action from the Vibhadrasana too. So when you straight this leg, bend the leg slightly. Now I'm going to ask Leo just to straighten with resistance. I'm going to hold this leg up so that she just, yeah, can you see it? Well, this is lifting up now. <laughs> so it's a challenging action, but all of this has got to lift as well. So all of this change is going to come eventually. We just gradually go through it in time. And then hinging over into Chakana Asana, that's it. Taking the hand down, extending the top arm up, and just lean in this position. So pushing back into your back leg nicely. And because we've taught this on, on quite a few occasions, you know, it's really important to be in it and start getting the benefits. So we come in to the preparation and precision and then just be there in the pose. So I know some of you have asked us to um, do longer stays in poses. We will be bringing out the video on, um, on that shortly. Taking a breath in and coming up and turning the feet. Okay, so we're turning the legs again, so you're turning your right foot in the left foot out and then extending. So yeah, we've got to be careful. We're going to work without the knee. So if we're working without the knee, we've got to get rotation. And then this is going to be with resistance. Now, you feel the strength coming here in. Redirects the energy in the pose. And then hinge over into Trikonasana. Yeah. So this is very challenging, challenging on the hips, so strong, and extend the top arm up. And again, once you're there, just be there in a position, breathing, 
grounding down into the legs. I want to see that you feel that weighted action in the legs. They've got to push down so strongly. The bones have got to ground you and the soft tissue fibre has got to lift you. So there's these two different actions going on. And then release in and coming up. Turn the feet to face forward and jump those legs together. And stand in Tadasana. So just be in your Tadasana. It's really lovely to come back to your mountain pose, being aware of the leg work, being aware of the balance. So just let those arms now completely release, let the shoulders release down. And through that traction of the upper shoulders, the arms becoming weighted, lift all the way through the centre of the body. So when you lift through the centre of the body, you're able to apply a little bit more energy into those legs. Push them and ground them down so strongly. Soften your facial features. And again, we come back to our life force, our breath, so breathe through the nostrils and just be with that internal energy. Soft inhalation, soft exhalation. Okay, so we're going to finish our practice today with Supta Baddha Konasana. It's going to be a really soft Supta Baddha Konasana. So Leo's just got a couple of um, foam pads here and she's just going to take the feet onto these foam pads and rest back into the supine position. Moving some of the stuff out of the way. <laughs> and release it. So just take a few moments in this pose. It's a groin opener, it's a passive action. We're just showing you um, this pose because we're finishing our practice. But please do stay in your Bhadakanasana, engaging with your breath, engaging with softening the whole of the front body to the spine. And just let everything become soft. Remember, once you're in your everyday life, doing everything that you need to do, this is where you want to be, with this quietness, this really beautiful, peaceful approach to your everyday activities, whatever you do. We're going to come out of our Supta Bhadakanasana, but please do stay in this place if you'd like to stay a little bit longer. Although, Leo, yeah, I don't think we will want to come out now, but <laughs> gradually bring those legs together. And roll to the right side. I hope you enjoyed um, watching our new video in our new studio. Yes, and if you are someone who is already doing inversions, that is Shashasana and Savagasana, that's head balance and shoulder balance, the video will continue with an inversion section that you can practice after this. This is not teaching you those inversions. If you don't already know them, then you need to go to an Iyengar teacher learn it in class and then you can do these inversions yourself at home. Yes, absolutely. And uh, it, it just adds a little bit extra, a little bit extra time and it becomes a little bit uh, more balanced in the practice. So, if you're leaving us today, then thank you for being with us. And if you're coming on to do the inversions, then just wait for a second and we'll be done in the next section. We're back again, but this time with the inversion. So if some of you have been uh, following the sequencing and joining the inversions onto the sequence, then you will need to have something for your head to come up into Shishasana, and the platform for Savangasana. So Shashasana, head balance, Savangasana, shoulder balance. 
These are ones that you're going to be doing if you've learnt them in your class with your teacher. Okay, so we're just going to go through a few basic instru instructions. This is just to help with the alignment and um, the base of the pose, but as Leo said, you need to be practicing this to be coming into your Shishasana. Okay, so kneeling down, interrupting your fingers and coming into this class. Now, the biggest mistake with this pose is this. A lot of people put their head here and clasp their hands together. So if you know that you do this and you're going to be changing the way you're clasping, then just be careful because of course whenever you change anything and you're changing direction, it can make you a little bit unstable. But what's really important is that you make this flexibility, you create a flexibility. You can see here that Leo's arms flatten down really nicely, the forearms. If you just have a look here, I'm going to show you the forearm on Leo here. This area gets very, very tight. On Leo, it's really nice and soft. In this area here, you've got to work at getting that nice and soft so that you can get the bones down and really ground down. So it's a very important action. And then you're going to just let the head go down, but not to the floor completely. Just let it you just bow in the head, tuck the toes under, keep the head off the floor and tuck the toes under and lift the knees up. And just let the head release down naturally. So that's what you need, that really nice length in the neck. And then coming into the action. Now how we're going to come into the action today is to really take the front body to the back body soften the knees and we're going to come into this bent leg action you can see here. This is really quite challenging. And then very, very slowly unfold the legs. So ground down into the arms and extend the legs up very slowly. So what's really key here, you can see that Leo is going slowly, she's active in her in her feet, she's active through her body. Now the centre buttocks got to move in. Just going to walk around and just see that Leo is in a good position here. And then we just lift the lower leg up. Lower leg up. That's it. And you see it's a very, very slow process. Don't rush it. Extend right up into the heels and we've got to find this rolling in action of the thighs. So rolling the thighs in. Seeing that you're grounding down from the base and getting that energy lifting up. So it's slightly different to Tadasana in, in direction but the same quality of alignment. So see that the back of the pelvis moves towards the left side and then grounding down very strongly in the wrists, spreading the toes, soft inhalation and exhalation. So if you're practicing this as a beginner, then work through your timer, one minute, two minute, three minute, until you can come up to eight to ten minutes. Of course, we're not going to be showing you that amount of time, but just being in the pose for as long as you can hold it. But see that it's a quality action. As soon as you start to lose that alignment in the pose, then it start to calm down. Now we're coming out of the pose because we're just showing you the practice. And if you stay a little bit longer, then do so. Or look to the video for Savagasana and then start your inversions. Okay, so Leo's going to come down with control in the same way as she came into the pose. So soft knees, keeping that lift through the thighs and then just bringing those legs in towards the body. It's a really challenging action. And then once you get all of that lift, the lower leg will take you to the floor. You can see that action. And then just releasing back down and releasing the buttocks onto your heels and stretching the arms forward and just being there. Take your time, don't get up too quickly, just take a few breaths. If you're still in Shishasana, then um, try and maintain 
all of those actions and the alignment. We're coming on to Sarvangasana now. So we're going to move this mat and bring this new prop base into our view. So we're going to just pop this here, that's it. All right, I just want to go through a few things that with this action. So when you come into this uh, preparation, you can see here, it's yeah, just taking a little bit of time coming into the action. Now, what a lot of people go wrong on the platform is to have the shoulders a little bit too close to the edge. If you do, quite often when you roll over, you end up rolling off the support. So if you're not used to using the platform, I would highly recommend to use the platform because um, this really does support the shoulders and freeze the neck. Um, but it's important that you get in a good place. You, you, you're not rolling off and you are actually still on the platform when you come into Halasana. Now when you come into Halasana, lots of people um, practice this in different ways. You can push your hands down to get a little bit of momentum. I tend to take my hands into this position and just place them underneath the towel and this just gives me a little lift to push up. So however you go, Leo's doing the same thing and then rolling over, I just find that really helps and your arms are in this position then. And you want to see that you really lengthen those arm fibers by extending those arms away from you, keeping the length in the legs. Remember, in this pose, you're trying to create space in the back, so you need to roll the whole of the, the lower back towards the buttocks so that you make space to put your hands. Now, when you take your hands onto your spine, you've got to keep this area grounded down the upper arm and place the hands. So you can see that Leo is using her skin, her flesh, for her hands, it's a really important action and the fingers are facing towards one another. And this is another thing we see quite a lot, is that the hands end up like that. That is not where we want to be. We want to turn the hands so that we are supporting. Ground very strongly into those upper arms and then one leg and the other come up. Yes, and then bring the leg up. So when you're in the pose, again, we have going to see that the middle buttock goes in, but we want to get as much lift as possible. So you have to reach through those legs. It's so important in this pose to reach through those legs and lighten the extension through the body. So keep in that action. Be sure that you're getting this slight rotation with the thighs. And again, the middle butter, keep checking the middle butter moves in strongly and you're extending up. Let the breath be smooth and even. And again, we're looking for long stays in this pose eventually. So we may be doing our head balance, our shishasana for five minutes and then we come to our sarangasana for 10 minutes. So normally double the time, so a lot to build up to if you're just starting out in your inversions. When you're practicing your self-engarsen, it's really important to keep the throat soft, the facial features soft. Although there's a lot going on, we have to see that there's a, there's a softness as well when you're practicing. We do have tutorials on these poses which will show you easier ways of approaching them or the very beginning of your inversions. So we would normally say your inversions would come once you've mastered a little bit of the standing poses, built up strength and stamina and um, yeah, had, had a bit of practice, you're understanding the leg work before you start coming into these poses. So if you're staying in your Savanasana stay, we're coming out of this pose now, we're coming into Halasana, and then Leo will be rolling down into her supine recovery position. 
You see it's all very beautifully controlled and then taking the other leg down. Very nicely done. And then slowly releasing down. So we've got the crash pad here, which is the launch pad, which is really, I would recommend to anybody to bring that full level up so that you don't have a bang down with the buttocks. It's really important that you, you have that. And just taking this launch pad underneath the head and wait for a few moments. So a few deep and longer inclinations, recover from your inversions, don't just get straight up and out of them. Recover for a few moments. Okay, so what we're going to do now is come into Shavasana. So we're going to, I'm going to help Leo do this, but if you're doing it by yourself, you're going to roll to your right side. But what I'm going to ask Leo to do is just lift her upper body. We're going to turn this support around like this, and then she's going to go back onto the support and then rest the head, it's really nice, isn't it? Mm. And you just lift her head a little bit so that that can go under there, that's great. So lining up, take the feet a little bit towards me, that's it, this way, that's it. Okay, so just be in this position. And what's really nice about this platform being turned in this way, it just is right, it supports the spine really nicely. And for those of you who wish to then straighten the legs with a little bit of resistance, pushing those legs, away in this position. So when we come for Shavasana, this is a time where we just need to put that pause button on and scan the body. So never be in a rush with this, this pose. As Ms. Dying always says, it's one of the hardest poses to practice. So we can forget about taking our leg around our head. This is the one that really we have to work and engage with. This is when we find out that peace, quietness, stillness, and try to bring this into our lives. So, scanning the body from the facial features, be sure that you're softening around the facial features, softening the eyes, the temples, softening around the forehead, between the eyebrows. Let the back teeth be apart. Soften the throat and soften the abdomen. Just be sure that the arms are rolling out so that the palms are facing up. And lastly, if you haven't already, just let those feet fall apart. And just let the body start to unfold. Take your observations to the tip of the nose. So just take that glance towards the tip of the nose and be aware that your breath is through your nostrils. So a soft inhalation and a soft exhalation. And again, like the inversions, if you wish to stay here for a little bit longer, then do so. We're going to start to come out of our shavasana. We would recommend you do at least five to 10 minutes of this pose. So Leo is going to slowly bend her knees, take her hands towards the body, and roll towards the right side. And then slowly coming up into a seated position. So we hope you enjoyed our inversion video. Please do practice the inversions if you already are practicing and we look forward to seeing you next time.
Namaste.